Welcome to the uh, webinar on how to manage cloud booking. Uh, before we begin, we want to mention that if you see anything in this webinar that is different than your copy of uh, Studio Cloud that you're running, it may be because we added some new features. Um, so if you have any questions or concerns, please go to the written materials because that is always up to date. And these webinars, um, there is a little bit of time between them when they're updated. To begin, with, to begin with, we're in the Cloud Services section, we're in the Cloud Booking tab, and we're in the Manage area. And here we have the uh, first option is Manage Cloud Booking, which we'll get to in, in just a minute. Underneath there, we have the cloud booking, web, cloud booking Web Address. And this is the address that if your customers typed into the web browser, it would take them directly to your cloud booking, um, your cloud booking site. Underneath that is the option to embed cloud booking in a website. And uh, it has instructions, and it also has a show the HTML code. If you just copy this and paste this into your website, what I just highlighted right there, that will put uh, cloud booking in your website so your customers can just go to your website to book appointments. And we also have a button here to view cloud booking in your browser if you want to view it. We're going to go ahead and jump into the manage cloud booking section. This first section is the first part where the customer goes to. Here they'll be prompted um, three different prompts on, on how to log in. These are optional. So this section right here, if you want to have new customers log in, you just uh, if you want to only have new customers log in, you just have that check marks selected. If you want to allow recurring customers to log in by email address, as it states there, you have that one, or you can have this one. You can do any combination of these. It is required that you do have one of those, though. Down here um, is information regarding what, what field your new customer, if you have uh, this top one, the allow new customers to book appointments, selected. These are all optional with the exception of the show first and last name. That is a required field. So you can show these other fields. If you say it's required over here, they will not be able to schedule an appointment until they've entered their business name. If you do say it's not required, then they can. They can just leave it off. Let's go ahead and continue on. We have here the custom questions. After they have logged in, you can optionally give them an interface to ask questions. Now, this is optional. You don't have to do that. You would, in this situation, type in the questions. Um, do you agree to our terms of use? And uh, you could have a uh, check mark. And that, this example right here shows what it is. You can do a combo bar box. And, if it, and you can say, yes, I agree. No, I, I, I don't agree. And you'd put the fields over here. You could have a text box where you have them type in stuff. And once again, these are all the examples of of what and you'd um, you could also do a text input which is just a small version of it. see this text area right here it lets you scroll the text input does not and then um, you also have a label which is more of an informational thing so in your checkbox right here you would type in the name of it do you agree to our terms of use you can put over here yes I agree and they have to check it before they continue and uh, so let's go ahead and uh, yes I agree so we've now added a question here. Do you agree to our terms of use? And it's a checkbox is how it is. And you can have as many as you want. So that's if you want to have questions. If you don't want to add que questions, it will skip this interface entirely and go directly to your available methods option. And what this is, you have a bunch of different ways of scheduling because everybody does it a little bit different. This first one is available to all uh, Cloudbus users. If you um, this next, these next three are only available for employee boost uh, subscribers. Now, let me. This one right here, the very first one, will show an appointment. And now this does link up to your Studio Cloud account. It will show an appointment whenever there is a slot available. If there is any type of appointment, regardless of what appointment scheduled, it will not. It will show it as not available. This is ideal for somebody who's just scheduling one person. The next one. Uh, and this one right here, the show available appointments, there's nothing for the for the uh, your client to click. And so it will just have the calendar there. This next one here, you can have it so it requires that your um, your client selects the equipment. Uh, if this is often used by uh, if they're scheduling a room with equipment and stuff like that. 
Um, so that's something that uh, may or may not apply to you. We have locations over here. And you can say that I only want people um, to be able to book, let's go ahead and just say the garden and the carriage house. Those are the only two locations that uh, we allow them to book. And then you can also have them book by employee. Uh, and you, you select what type of employee type. Um, we, in this example, um, photographers. You could have maybe three photographers, and so they can select any one of those. And you can, underneath the employee uh, boost options, you can do employee management, and that, that um, will let you tell who's in which type of uh, employee category. So this shows you availability. When the, these three, all four of these, detect when an appointment is available. After you decide which one you want to use, then you come down here and say, okay, when they, select, they want to select an appointment, I need to detect how long that appointment is. So you can say, okay, I want all of my appointments, regardless of whatever option it is, to be 30 minutes. That's an option. Um, so if you, if you had this one right here, show available appointments when an appointment is scheduled, they wouldn't click anything up here, and they, meaning they wouldn't click anything in the online, uh, in the cloud booking. And if you had every appointment set for 30 minutes, they also, the only thing they would do would be to select a time that's available, and that would be it. And then check out. If you wanted to have varying uh, lengths of appointments, you could select, I want to do a, a session, and I want to do a consultation, and um, a family. And this is a, a photographer example, it's a child senior. You can do all those, and when you actually set up the appointment types, there is a default length. And so Studio Cloud will detect what you entered for the default length and use that as the duration. Whether it's five minutes, whether it's 30, whether it's three hours, it will detect it. Um, so that, so if you have this top one selected, which means they don't click on anything, and this bottom one, they would only select one of these things, session, consultation, family, child, seniors, they'd select one of those, and then it would show them available appointments. If you have one of these two selected, they have to first, let's do this one right here, they have to first select in this example, a photographer, and then they have to select the type of appointment they want. So they they have to click twice before it'll show them available appointments. The last option on, on here, now notice on this previous one, it said prices are not listed. There is no price associated with an appointment type. If you want to have customers to be able to pay when they check out, you need to select this one. And it, it doesn't matter which one of these available options you select, but if you want to have them be able to pay, you need to do it here. When you create a product, service, or package, it does allow you to link it to an appointment type. Um, so you will need to do that. And then you can come in here and say, I want to use, these are all the price lists. And so you can use the wedding price list, the portrait price list, or products, all product services, whatever you want. Well, just for this example, use the wedding price list. Now this will get the prices that are included in the price list. It will also link up to the session type that you added for each product. And so it has the default duration. Um, so this one, let's let's go ahead and do the, the whole process. The first one right here, this example, they select which, in this example, which photographer they want. This next one, they select the package, product, or service, which tells them which price. And it also, under the covers, has it linked up so that it can tell the durations, whether it's 30 minutes, 5 minutes, or 60 minutes. And that's on a per product, service, or package basis. So you've now done that. They've gone through, they've selected which uh, appointment they want. Now they go to checkout. Now, right here, these are email receipts that you can choose to have sent. You can have it send an email to the client to, note, to notify them that they, they did sign up and have it also send it to the business email address that you have when you register with Studio Cloud. Um, that's under the settings, business information, where, where you set that. Or you can have it, if you have this option, employee is available option, where it's a photographer, you can also have it send an email to that employee to notify them that they've been booked. Underneath that, you also have the checkout payment options. In this example, it says do not request payment at time of booking, so that means they pay in studio or uh, through another means. Um, if you have a merchant warehouse set up with your account, in this example account, we do not have merchant warehouse set up, but you could click on there, and that means that when they book, before the booking would go through, they'd have to pay by credit card, and uh, you'd receive your payment at the, very, at the time of booking, or maybe you require a... Um, a down payment or um, confirmation payment or something like that. Now there's some ad additional options you can do. Um, right now you can select only show five available appointments per day so that you can limit how many appointments are visible and we have the option here and this lists the appointments 
at the earliest possible times of the day. And I know that uh, there may be more options. Look, when you view your cloud booking, there may be additional options on how that those limited five appointments are spread out through the day. Um, so this might look a little bit different in your version. Um, but so if you only wanted to have one appointment available, all you do is, is select it like that. And if you turn it off, it shows as many appointments as you have available in the business hours that you selected. Your uh, the wording here is often different. So maybe you use the word photographer, maybe you were use the word employee. You can change the wording used in Studio Cloud so that they can see, so that you can show up um, wording that is um, appropriate for them. So we've now looked at um, the wording. We looked at the limited available appointments. Um, the actual availability it does depend upon your business hours. And uh, let's go ahead and select your business hours manage business hours right here and right here is where you select when you want the appointments available and this is on a on an entire business level so you just enter what times you want available and you click save and then it will show those time frames um, so that is a quick overview of how to use cloud booking and how to manage it uh, when you edit or uh, created a client or also when you create an invoice you can also send them a link and I think it's also from the uh, when you create an appointment you can send them a a cloud booking invite so they can book online um, oftentimes people would would prefer they have it on their web page as well so you have a lot of different options available to you with cloud booking and it's just a matter of um, diving in there and see which which one matches your needs um, as I mentioned in the start if you see anything different in the, from this webinar in your versus studio cloud um, please refer to the written uh, to written tutorials. Uh, cloud booking is fairly new, so there is a possibility they'll be adding a lot more features. Well, that covers it. Thank you, and have a great day.